Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alicia and I'm the owner of Alicia Be Creative and today on my channel we're going to be doing another Tumblr tutorial and this one is going to be a spring inspired herringbone. So I did do a similar design to a herringbone a couple months ago. It was a winter inspired design where I did multiple different glitters and sort of that V-split v style look. This is though going to be a true herringbone look using a template so you guys can recreate this for your own. So of course, everything I use in today's tutorial will be listed and linked down in the description box. Be sure to check that description box out for discount codes as well as links to all of my social media. So let's go ahead and jump right into today's tutorial. So I wanted to start by showing you guys what we're using today. So I'm going to be using a bunch of glitter and vinyl from a vinyl gallery. So I do have a discount code for their website. It is Leisha B and that'll save you 10%. So we're using this beautiful floral design as well as some glitters from 4k glitter co their line. So before I can go ahead and get things applied, I do have to go ahead and get my template ready. So I found this herringbone pattern SVG off of creative fabrica and I've just gone ahead and downloaded it and I'm going to upload it into Cricut Design Space. So the herringbone pattern that I got from Creative Fabrica has two pieces. So it has sort of the lines with which you would cut to fill up the spaces in between each rectangle, but I'm actually not going to be using the line work here. I'm only going to be working with the solid pattern so that I can use that as my stencil. So I've just clicked off being able to see the lined pattern and now I'm going to resize this portion of the template which is the stencil portion to 9.25 wide by 8 inches in height. So I'm working with a 20 ounce skinny today and that is the width and size of the tumbler I'm working with. So I'm going to go ahead and get that sized appropriately and then we're going to print this on stencil vinyl. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you both templates. So I cut the herringbone pattern on both of these templates. So I use stencil vinyl, which is what we'll apply first, but I also cut the same pattern onto this floral pattern as well. So the reason why I did that is because I do want to include this floral pattern on the herringbone design. And so to be able to do that without having to, you know, create my own rectangles is I've just recut the pattern directly onto my vinyl. That way it'll be easy to just peel and stick these on when I get to that point. So this spring floral design is from 4K, it's from Shop Vinyl Gallery or from Vinyl Gallery. And this is actually a transparent vinyl. So that means that it's completely clear and see-through. So everywhere that you see white is actually see-through. So we're gonna make sure that we are applying this onto some glittered sections to give that beautiful glittered work. So I did a similar tutorial where I've used transparent vinyl before. Um, I'll list a couple of those tutorials down in the description box for you guys to check out. But I do love the option of using uh, transparent vinyls to be able to add to my tumbler, but also being able to apply them over glitter is my favorite way because then you get a beautiful glittered look under your vinyl. So I'm just going to go ahead and weed out everything I don't need, which is all of those intricate de details and line work that separates all of the rectangles. And then this I'm going to set aside and we're going to get started on the template. So now with my template, uh, you'll notice that I didn't do any real weeding on this, mostly because I want to apply the entire piece first, keeping everything as is, not removing that line work like I did on my floral pattern, because I want to apply the entire template to my tumbler. So I'm just grabbing some transfer tape and we're going to use my transfer tape here and apply this to my stencil vinyl here that's already been cut with the pattern that we're using. And then we're going to be able to get this applied to the cup. So I did already go ahead and prep my tumbler and get that cleaned up sanded down and then spray painted with some white spray paint. And so that is my way to kind of prep and get everything ready for when I'm beginning work on a tumbler design. So the other thing I wanted to mention is you're going to see me in this next section as I go to apply this to the tumbler, you're going to see me struggle a little bit and there's a couple of reasons why. So the spray paint that I grabbed, I think either was frozen when I grabbed it 
or potentially old because when I went to go spray paint my tumbler, it was coming out kind of like spitting and sputtering and um, it left like this really grainy texture on my tumbler, which made it really difficult to get my stencil vinyl to adhere to the tumbler. So I definitely always say to use stencil vinyl or something like this when you're doing patterns that are intricate like these because it's much easier to remove these. However, in this case, I wish I would have gone with a permanent vinyl or maybe even just a stronger removable vinyl because the stencil vinyl is, does, isn't as sticky as some of those vinyls. It really was difficult to get the transfer tape removed from the top portion of that. So I'll show you what I mean as we kind of get through that. But what I've done now is I've just gone ahead and put my template onto my cup, making sure that it's going to meet beautifully on the other side without a seam. And now I'm going to apply one edge of the template, flip that over, and then literally roll the template onto my cup. Using my squeegee tool to really kind of smooth out any air bubbles or pockets that may trap any wrinkles in the stencil vinyl, making sure that everything goes on straight as I wrap this all the way around the tumbler. So again, you could use alternatives. You certainly could use um, removable vinyl, which typically is the go-to because a lot of people don't like to go out of their way to purchase the stencil vinyl. So people will use removable vinyl, which is an option. And even some people have used for this particular design permanent vinyl because you're really not going to leave it on the cup for that long. And you're going to be painting over any potential residue that may get stuck as you're removing those separate pieces. So I'm just going to continue to squeegee this onto the tumbler here, just making sure that I'm getting this to stick down really well. It was at this point that I started to realize that things weren't sticking like I was used to. And I knew that it probably had to do with the spray paint. So I'm just continuing to do my best because I didn't want to have to go back inside to recut the file um, and then try and fix my spray paint mess because even if I put other layers of spray paint on top of it, potentially we're still going to find that grainy texture um, through that those layers of spray paint. And so I didn't really, really want to waste any additional time in this point on the, the, the tumbler. So continuing to just get all the way to the edge here, the other side of the cup, I'm just cutting that excess backing away so that I can then make sure everything is going to line up. Before I'm going to put this last section on, I'm going to remove that blue painter's tape that I used to keep one side adhered and then roll on the very last section of the stencil vinyl and template that we're using. So I'm going to go over this with my squeegee tool. Again, this is more so because of my spray painting mishap to really try and get as much to stick down as possible. And then I'm going to start to remove the, the transfer tape from the top of this stencil. So as you can see already, I'm already starting to struggle a little bit because of the spray paint that really isn't helping my pieces of stencil vinyl stick. So this took me a good while to get it all applied to the cup. I'm going to speed this up because, of course, I don't want you to sit here and watch me struggle as bad as I struggled. <laughs> but I did manage to get the entire transfer sheet off. You're going to see as I show you after I pulled the transfer tape off, you're going to see that some of the pieces aren't truly sticking, but honestly, it's fine because we're literally going to go right from here to being able to apply our glitter and Mod Podge to the tumblers. So now is the point in time where I'm going to get everything glittered, but before I can get everything glittered, I'm going to map out with a marker what color is going to go where. That way I know what pieces to lift up and pull as I'm going through the different glitters that we're using. So keep in mind, there probably is a real technique to how you're supposed to like decide your colors. There probably is also a max color limit to doing a herringbone. Um, I am someone who's like a go big or go home person. So all of these colors matched beautifully with the vinyl and I desperately wanted to use the vinyl. So I was not willing to sacrifice glitter or vinyl in this case. So I decided to go with the four glitter and the vinyl and I'm just going to make it work. So what I did was I have my colors kind of in order there. 
And I literally would just go through and label each sort of rectangle as I go, making sure though at any point in time that I don't ever have two of the same color or the same color next to itself. So if I would happen to run into that, then I would just move sort of down a box and then put the glitter that's supposed to go next in order and then go back and fill that with whatever was going to go after. So if I ran into a section where I'm on hot pink and it happens to be directly next to another hot pink section, I then would just move down the next row and then put the hot pink and then go back to the spot that's open and put my green glitter there. So I hope that makes sense. And really there probably again is a real method, but I am just kind of winging it. I've never actually seen someone do a herringbone um, tumbler. I've seen plenty of them, but not ever watched tutorial. And so I'm kind of just winging it. Um, so I'm just going to continue to do this again. I started at the top and went in one direction and literally just went row by row down until I was to the very bottom of the tumbler, keeping in mind that I want all four glitters to be present and I also want some rectangles that are also going to be vinyl. So once I feel like I am satisfied with that and that I don't have any sections where two glitters are the same and meeting right next to each other, I'm going to go ahead and move on to prepping to get these glittered. So I found some acrylic paints that are corresponding to the glitter colors I'm going to be using. I will list all the colors down in the description box. It doesn't necessarily matter what you choose to base paint with. I like though to base paint with an acrylic paint that really is going to bring out the vibrancy of the glitter because if you've ever tried to um, glitter on top of a white base, you don't quite, it's beautiful, but you don't quite get the vibrancy that you get when you take the time to base paint before you apply your glitter. So that's why I choose to kind of base paint in these kinds of situations because I really want that vibrancy of the glitter to be there and I don't want it to sort of look washed out or look less sparkly or a little bit duller if I chose to just go right off of that that white base. So now over top of all four of these acrylic paints, I'm just adding Mod Podge because I am going to go ahead and as I'm base painting, we're going to be applying the glitter right over top of that first layer of paint and then go over top when I do my second coats with just plain Mod Podge. So we're starting with our first color, which is a green. This is Meadows from Vinyl Gallery. Their glitter line is called 4K Glitter. So we're going to start with this. And what I've grabbed is just a bunch of like straight edge paint brushes, which are the easiest ones to be able to use when you are using a template because you can really get into the corners and edges and things to be able to um, get your entire sections as you're removing the stencils, stencils fully glittered. So I've just gone around my cup and I'm just looking for all of the rectangles that are labeled with the letter G and I'm just removing all of those rectangles so that I know all of the different spaces that are going to be this beautiful green glitter. Once I've gotten all of my rectangles removed, I then can go into starting with the paint and Mod Podge mixture that I have to be able to get this glitter applied. So again, taking that mixture there and just going over section by section. Um, remember that Mod Podge does dry quickly. So if you're going to be using Mod Podge, you definitely are going to, going to want to work quickly. This is definitely um, a template. Actually, most templates, I should say, are really ones that you want to go over each section of glitter at least twice, especially if you're using Mod Podge. I'm sure there's other adhesives out there that really do allow a better um, adhesive. Um, like Mod Podge, but for a template, I don't necessarily want to get out Mod Podge or get out epoxy to be able to apply my glitter. So I usually always end up defaulting to Mod Podge because it's quick and easy, although it can be really, really frustrating sometimes to use when the Mod Podge dries on you. It does get the job done. So I'm just going to go ahead and get all of these sections base painted with the Mod Podge and acrylic paint mixture. And then you're going to see me dry all of my glittered sections with my heat gun. And then I'm going to go in with um, a second coat of glitter. And when I do my second coat of glitter, I'm pouring directly from my Mod Podge bottle. So I'm only doing Mod Podge. You don't want to go back and use your paint mixture because then it's going to cover up that first layer of glitter anyway. And it's not really going to be any more vibrant than if you were to just stick with that one layer of glitter, if that makes sense. So now that we've got that done, we're going to move to this, this hot pink color. So this is hot pink from 
vinyl gallery and I've got that beautiful acrylic paint mixed with Mod Podge. We're doing the exact same thing. So this is going to be kind of repetitive, but I am just going to go over it because I think it's important for you guys to see how this sort of morphs and turns into this beautiful looking tumbler in the end. And although it is so much work at the forefront, this glittering part probably took me anywhere for, from probably anywhere from 45 minutes to maybe an hour and 15 between the time that I'm mixing my Mod Podge and acrylic paint together to getting each section, you know, removed uh, stencil by stencil and then applying each layer of glitter. Knowing that I have to put two coats of glitter on this, it probably took me a little over an hour to get the entire glittering section done. So depending on how quick or how slow your move, obviously that time may change, but that's pretty typical when you're doing a a, a tumbler design that is from a template, if that makes sense. It's going to take you a little bit longer in the forefront, but really the rest of your work for the most part then is basically done because you've done your, all of your hard work up front and then it's just the epoxying process, sanding, adding your vinyl decals, and then you're kind of done. So we've now gone in with the second layer of glitter here. I'm just applying that again, just straight Mod Podge over all of those hot pink sections and getting this ready to be removed for the third glitter that we're going to be using on this tumbler. So I've already removed my stencils and now I'm going to the hot, the light pink sections doing the exact same thing. Um, the other thing I'm going to mention since we're really just watching a repeat of me glittering all of these sections is I got my template from Creative Fabrica. That is not the only place that you can find a beautiful herringbone template design. There are plenty of places that you can find templates. There are ones on Etsy, um, LB Creates, which I use the Argyle template from. She also has a herringbone style um, template on her website as well. She has beautiful templates. And what I love about her templates is hers comes sized based on the cup that you use. So whether you use hog tumblers, whether you use plumps from the Steel Magnolia, or maybe you use cups from Maker Flow, she has templates that are sized to all different, different like vendors that um, sell tumblers. And it just makes it so much easier to get a template already ready with the size that you're going to need it. So you don't really have to worry about measuring your cup correctly and maybe struggling with the cutting of the template and getting everything lined up accordingly. So now we're on to yellow. This is Sunny Days. It's a beautiful, beautiful yellow. I don't really have a whole lot of yellow glitter in my collection of glitter, believe it or not. That is probably the smallest section of glitter that I have, just because yellow is not necessarily a requested color by a lot of my customer base. But I do love how beautiful this yellow is with the florals that we're bringing into this with the, the pattern vinyl. So yellow is definitely not a color I get to use very often, but I definitely did not want to leave out the color yellow because I feel like this just screams spring to me. When I'm thinking spring, I'm thinking pastels. I'm thinking, I think the color yellow, honestly, you know, bright sunny days, the sun coming out a day, uh, longer in the day, longer days. So I had to make sure that I had a beautiful yellow glitter. And thankfully I had one from Vinyl Gallery and sunny days was definitely the perfect match to go with this glitter um, herringbone that we're creating here. So I'm going to finish up doing my base layer again of sunny days. I'll dry this with my heat gun just to speed up the process so I don't have to wait forever for Mod Podge to dry. And then I'm going to go ahead and do my second coat of glitter over top of all of those sections. I am being kind of I don't want to say particular, but I am being mindful and trying not to get glitter and Mod Podge on the outside of the squares or rectangles that I'm pulling from because I don't want there to be too many issues when I go to remove the rest of the, the, the stencil that's on there. So this is what we have so far. And so at this point, I've gone ahead and removed the last final pieces that are actually going to be vinyl. So because they're going to be vinyl, I'm going to go ahead and just go in with white glitter. So I'm using Daisy from my Asia Creation. So we get that beautiful glittered sparkly look underneath. Um, but we, um, so we're gonna get that beautiful kind of sparkle underneath if that makes sense. So I didn't wanna not include the white glitter because if I didn't, 
I was afraid that when I went to epoxy, I'd have weird divots where you would feel glitter, but also feel no glitter. So I went with the white glitter to again, get that sparkle. I thought about just going in at that point and adding the vinyl, but I didn't want to risk having any of my other glitter get on top of the vinyl. So I decided that I would wait to do that until um, I was ready to do like the washi tape lines. So now after everything is just about dry, not fully dry, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the rest of the stencil. This is the part that you want to be careful. You're removing all of those small, teeny tiny lines in between each of the rectangles. And so you wanna be careful that when you are removing this, that you're not removing any of your glitter and Mod Podge that you spent so long getting applied to the cup. So go slow with this. I used my tweezers to kind of help me get in those small spaces. I did have a couple sections that sort of lifted up because I had gone over those lines a little too far with my glitter and Mod Podge in a couple sections, but I was able to just very quickly kind of pat down with my finger the little glitter pieces of Mod Podge that were like sticking up and pat that down so I didn't have to do any actual touch-up work to the cup. But you do want to go slow with this and make sure to give your cup a once over before you do anything else to fix any mishaps that may have happened when you've removed the rest of the stencil here so that you don't have to um, so that you can do those touch-ups now and not notice them later after you've already epoxied the cup so this is what it looks like we're gonna let it dry for about an hour and then after it dries I am going to brush off any excess glitter and then spray seal this twice with rust-oleum clear gloss spray paint so after I put my two coats of KS Resin Liquidy Split on here. My cup is pretty much smooth. I am going to go ahead and take an 80 grit sanding block though and we're going to go ahead and sand the bottom rim and the top rim and anything that may be sharp along the sides. Um, for the most part, as I mentioned, it's pretty smooth after my two coats. I did probably 30 mLs for the first coat and then for my second coat, I think I did about 20 mLs on this cup and it's nice and smooth, more than enough epoxy to cover this so I can't feel the glitter underneath it. So after I've sanded down with my 80 grit sanding block, I'm gonna go ahead and take my Dremel tool here and I'm going to sand the top rim so we get that fine line of stainless steel exposed. So again, we do this so that when we do the final coats of epoxy, that our epoxy is going to adhere to the top outer edge of our cup and not over the lip of the cup. So after I've gotten that done, I'm going to take this off camera and just wipe it down with 91% rubbing alcohol and a paper towel before we're going to move into addressing the bottom here. So as you know, I didn't glitter the bottom and normally um, if I don't glitter the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and spray paint it so it has just a very solid colored bottom. So I decide that we're going to do that for this tumbler here and so I'm just taking a piece of blue painter's tape to really create that straight line along the bottom edge here so that the spray paint obviously stays locally to that bottom edge and doesn't creep up along our beautiful herringbone design. I'll then grab some saran wrap and wrap that around the rest of the cup to protect the cup from spray paint and any overspray that we may have as we're spray painting. And then we're going to take this outside to paint the bottom. So normally for this kind of cup, I would just do like a white base or a white bottom. But since I struggled so much with the white can of spray paint, I decided to do this a beautiful pink. So this is Farmer's Daughter, Daughter from Color Shop. It's a beautiful pink and I feel like it goes so well with the aesthetic of the cup that we're going for. So now that that is dry, which doesn't take very long to do so, we're going to go ahead and remove the tape and the saran wrap. And then we're going to get into filling up those white rectangles with our vinyl. So we already have this cut and prepped and ready to go. And the way that I'm doing this is this is the exact template that I use out of stencil vinyl, just cut on my pattern vinyl. So I'm trying to find the edge where everything kind of lines up. So I'm pulling the correct rectangles as I apply them to the tumbler. So this is important because all of the rectangles when for this particular pattern, when you size them to the cup that you're using, it's going to be slightly different. So you want to make sure that you're following the pattern so that you can find the exact match to those rectangle pieces. So I'm just kind of following along. There was one that was right along the seam. So I ended up having to pick a different rectangle to use that was almost the same size, but it was slightly off. So I did have to do a little bit of trimming. But aside from that, everything did really match up. I was able to get these applied really rather quickly. And it really just kind of, you can just at this point really start to see everything come together which I absolutely love. So we're going to go ahead and apply 
the last couple strips here of our vinyl. So I just love that this was um, a transparent vinyl that I had on hand. I didn't actually know it until I cut the file and then went to go weed everything out. And I was like, oh, this is transparent. And I was like, oh, I'll just put it over white glitter just to kind of give that sparkle, but really still keep the vibrancy of the pattern vinyl over that white glitter. So a couple more sections here we're gonna apply. Again, I'm just literally matching up. You're gonna see me keep going back and forth to where, that, where I know that seam is so that I can try and figure out which section of vinyl <laughs> each piece goes to. It's kind of like a little puzzle, kind of cool. Um, that way I can get everything placed really nicely and what I love is because this was cut directly from the same template that I used to apply to the cup everything fit seamlessly and I really didn't have to do any trimming other than that one that I had to pull from a separate section so after this is done it'll now be time to do our vinyl work so you're gonna see that I showed at the beginning I'm using washi tape for my vinyl work. So there are definitely multiple ways that you could do this. Again, this file particularly came with both the stencil part of the herringbone as well as the line work. But for me, I feel like that's way more work than I really need to do when it comes to trying to line that up evenly and making it look perfect. I feel like I would stress myself out cutting that and then trying to get that applied. I just didn't wanna do that. So I decide that I'm going to go with washi tape. And so I have this beautiful pink holographic or metallic looking washi tape that we're going to use. And so I'm going to show you a couple lines of me doing this. And then I'm going to really do a speed session and just show you as I'm working through it. But I just pick kind of the longest line I can find. And I just, you know, put that washi tape right through the center of all of those rectangles. So we're kind of putting back the stencil piece that we, we removed at the very end. And then after I've cut like it along the bottom, I then go back to those sections and I cut any overlap. So I'm basically just making sure that as I'm applying my washi tape, that I'm also cutting the cross sections where the two pieces of washi tape may, may meet. That way I don't have anything overlapping. Everything almost looks like a seamless look, but when you look really closely, it's really just two different pieces of washi tape meeting in different directions, but cut super close together. So I hope that makes sense, but that's essentially what you do for this. I thought about doing like a smaller line over top, but I really just was loving how this was coming out that I was like, nope, I think I'm sticking with just the pink and we're going to go with it. So finally, we're going to do our last two lines. We're going to do a line at the very, very top of the cup, which can be kind of tricky and risky because washi tape does like to kind of bubble at the top. But if you've sanded really well and you have a really smooth rim, this really should go on pretty seamlessly at the top. I am making sure, though, to still leave that rim of stainless steel exposed because, again, we don't want, it, want our final coats of epoxy to adhere to the top edge of our cup or our washi tape, we want it to adhere to the stainless steel. So I am just below that fine line of stainless steel that I created with my sanding block and Dremel tool. That way I can make sure that my final coats of epoxy are still going to adhere up there and not onto just my washi tape. So we're going to do the same with the bottom, just kind of finishing out this design. I really love how this turned out. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I definitely have a couple other spring themed herringbone ideas that I want to try out. Um, and I hope that you guys definitely enjoyed this video. So after I finish my washi tape, I'm just going to go over, make sure everything looks good. And then of course, I'm going to seal my washi tape. So you guys know that washi tape tends to repel epoxy. And so to make sure that I get really beautiful finishes, I'm gonna take some Minwax Polycrylic and seal this before I do final coats of epoxy. So I hope that you guys enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, definitely be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.